Hello and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today no matter what it is that you're doing. For our free wire tutorial here on YouTube today I'd like to share with you a design utilising a twisted flat bead and creating that into a woven ring design. I have had several requests to bring more wire rings to you so this is what we're going to create today. So I will show you that a little bit more closely on the board in just a second. It is an accessible design. I aim to bring all of my tutorials for people who are newer or perhaps looking to improve their basic wire work skills. So if you'd like to join me down at the board, I'll show you the bead mix I'm using, the bead itself and the ring that we're going to create together. So my bead blend that I'm working from today is a beautiful colour trends mix from my friends at Jesse James Beads in Parisian Blue. So it's a beautiful blend of navies and muted, almost heading towards duck egg blue shades. And you do get a number of these AB coated half and half colour flat twisted beads. Now they're approximately 14 millimetres and it's like a twisted step facet with a really good drill hole aperture. So I'm just going to move the bead blend out of the way but you do get lots of loveliness in there. This is the bead itself so you could use any bead that you wished to but a flat bead is what's going to work. Really helpful when your ring display just rolls around all over the board. It is a beautiful smoky quartz crystal and it can do what it wants. So that's the bead we're going to use. Your main prerogative for choosing the bead is that it's flat. This is interesting because it's both faceted and the facets are twisted. You do need a reasonable drill hole through it. But I'm going to talk you through some wire choices in just a moment anyway. So I'm going to pop that up to one side for now and let's have a look at the ring itself. So I've created this in a UK size Q. I think that's about a US size 8. You can obviously adjust the size of the ring to suit yourself. It showcases a lovely little bit of wire work and it really does show the beauty of your chosen bead. So let's just take that back off the finger and we'll have a look. Very, very comfortable underneath. There are no wire ends to stick into your hands. And it is basic wire weaving. I'm using a three and one weave around the shank of the ring. It's a twisted setting. And that's what we're going to end up with. So let's talk about our wire as well. I'll just pop this over to one side, see if that rolls around. We're going to be using two eight inch lengths and I've chosen to work in a heavier gauge of wire. This is 16 gauge, which is approximately equivalent to 1.25 millimeters. And I have two eight inch lengths. Now you have a choice with the weaving wire the ring that I have here on display is woven with a 0.4 or 26 gauge. It's a nice fine wire and we'd work off the reel for that one. But I'm going to demonstrate to you with a slightly heavier gauge wire a little bit later on as well. So you could, if you prefer, use a 0.5 24 gauge wire and at the end of the video I'll put these two rings side by side so you can see the both of them and see which would be your preference because they will look just slightly different. You'll also have the opportunity to get rid of any thumbprints you see on your beads. So to begin with what we're going to do is as ever warm through our two main pieces of wire. So what we're achieving here is we're straightening out any lumps and bumps in the wire. We're also adding just a little bit of fluidity to make our life slightly easier later. I've also taken a second just to flush trim both ends of that wire, albeit we may end up trimming a little extra of that wire away if we need to. So what I would do to begin with is I'd take my reel of finer gauge wire. Now I have 0.4 millimeter 26 gauge here you could equally work with 0.5 or 24 gauge. Just to get us started I'm going to show you how to begin the weaving design. So I'm going to slide that bead down onto the finer gauge wire and I'm just going to ignore that for as long as possible. So I'm going to unspool a good foot to a foot and a half of wire and I'm just going to push that out to one side and pretend to forget all about that beautiful bead that we'll be adding in later. 
So what we're going to do is take one of our strands of wire and we're going to start about two thirds of the way along, one third from the right hand side, two thirds from the left. And I'm going to come probably four or five inches from the cut end of my finer gauge wire. And I'm going to rotate that around three times. So we've got three visible wraps and I'm going to tidy that up super neatly. I'm going to drop in now my second section of that heavier 1.25 or 16 gauge wire and I'm going to commence my three and one wrapping. So as I said we're about one third from one end and we're moving towards the shorter end with the shorter section of that finer gauge wire. So I'm going to bring that around so that we encircle both the upper and lower sections of that wire one time before continuing to wrap three times around the lower wire and every time I complete three turns I'm just going to scooch that wire up to make it neat and tidy before circling around both the lower and the upper wire before returning then to do three more wraps around the lower of those two wires. So pulling that nice and tightly into position you can use your tools to help you if you need to make sure that those wraps are nice and neat and tidy and then continue all the way along until you run out of wire. You'll need to finish with three wraps on the end that is closer to the short, the short end rather. So let's just do that now and make it as if we had run out of wire in this direction. So that's one, two and three. This is a really nice wrap or weave rather because it doesn't matter which way you look at it it will always be the same so once you've decided that you've run out of wire you don't want to mess around with that short end or you've completed as much as you care to do so I'm just going to flip that over to the rear side pop in with those flush cutters as close as I can to the joint between the upper and lower wires let's just tidy that out of the way and then get that last little tail of wire to sit down as neatly as possible. Again, I'm going to scooch up those three coils at the base, turn them over and make sure everything is nice and neat and tidy. Flipping that back over to the other side, you can see that that's super neat. So once you have come along to the end of your wire, you remember we used about four inches from the end to reach this section. What we're going to do is flip the design over and continue in the opposite direction down through the central section of those two heavier gauge wires. So I've got one more wrap to do and we're working now towards the reel. Do you remember we put the bead on? Let's put that back out of the way. And we're going to wrap three times around the lower, once around both. Make sure that that's nice and neat and tidy. And then continue on our merry way so that we're wrapping three times around the lower and then once around both. What I'm going to do now is bring in a section that I worked on earlier to make this slightly less dull for you. We're going to continue to fill a good couple of inches, three or so inches in the centre of our two sections of wire and I'll show you now what that looks like. So what I've done so I can show you the comparison between the two lighter gauge weaving wires is I've prepared a couple of sections of that heavier gauge wire and wrapped some 0.5 or 24 gauge wire around in exactly the same weave, so a 3 and one weave, and I will show you now what that looks like on the board. So we filled the central third or so of those two eight inch lengths of the heavier gauge wire with our three and one weaving. And as promised, I've prepared this with the slightly heavier of the two wires. And at the end of today's video, I will put the ring we make together side by side with the lighter ring that I prepared earlier so that you can see what those two different wire gauges look like side by side. And that should help you choose which one you want to work with. One of the benefits of working with the slightly heavier gauge wire, and if you remember we added our bead onto the reel before we began weaving, one of the benefits is that it makes up slightly quicker. One of the downsides is it's slightly firmer on your fingertips. You'll lose just a little bit more skin from the ends of your fingers. So it's six of one and half a dozen of the other, as we say here in the UK. So we have filled the central third or so of our heavier gauge wire with weaving, whichever of the finer gauge wires you've chosen. What we're going to do now is grab ourselves a ring mandrel and start to form this around using the central section of that wire. One of the things that will benefit you 
in wire working if you're newer is just warming that wire through. Now if we've got plain wire it's easy enough to just run thumb and forefinger over. If we're working with woven wire we're almost putting an intention of heat into that central section. So I'm just going to draw the reel of wire and that bead out of the way for a moment whilst I grab myself a ring mandrel. So I'm going to just allow this to sit underneath the tail of the wire at the point at which I want to create the size. So I'm going to go for around about a five and a half for this ring. I'm just going to draw one tail over the top in one direction and the other tail over the top in the other direction. Now what you'll see is I've left a very large gap in the middle. So I'm creating a helix rather than a complete ring shape. Let me just withdraw that noisy mandrel out of the way, pop it over to one side where I hopefully won't knock it on the floor. So let's just pop that onto my finger for a second. That finger is about a five. So let's have a look. That's looking reasonable. We don't want it to be too tight at this stage because we'll be using a little bit of that ring size to add in our bead. So the next thing that we're going to do is just try that bead in for size and see if we've left ourselves enough space. So I'm just having to open that out ever so slightly. And once we've set that bead into position, I'm just going to straighten the coiled wire around the outside and then start by bringing the inner of the two wires circling around the edge of that bead. Now, because we warmed this through first, we're using that lovely intention just to, the wire will create a circular form if it's nice and warm for you. Again, on the second side, we're taking the inner of the two heavier gauges, and I'm just going to start drawing that around in an imaginary shape around the bead that we're using today. Now you will often during this stage of the tutorial just slightly open up the ring size so you may need to reform that as you go. You do have the option to pop it back on the mandrel or if you're making it for yourself onto your finger. So let's take that back out of the way for a moment. The first thing that we're going to do now is to take the wire that has come through the bead. Let me just lift that up for a second so you can remember what's going on. Our wire has travelled all the way along, weaving in a three and one pattern around the shank of the ring. And what we're going to do now is take that across from one side to the other side. And what we need to do is just to set our bead into position. So again, I'm just taking a couple of seconds to start my wires moving around the outside of that bead. So I'm happy with its position on the shank of the ring. So it does take just a little bit of manoeuvring to get that to sit. Once it's exactly where you want it to be, I'm just going to hold that still for a second. What we're going to do is to set the bead in position by wrapping three times around the inner of those two heavier gauges of wire on the opposite side from where that bead wire starts. So let me just pinch the bead into position. I'm just going to wrap three times around that inner wire. So it is, again, I will say I'm working with the slightly heavier wire now, so it's quicker to build in terms of the space that the wraps take up because they're physically larger. Let's just tidy that up, but it is slightly firmer on your fingers. And I'll show you the, both of the rings side by side at the end of the tutorial when we've finished working. So that's three wraps around the inner of the two heavier gauges. And then we're going to wrap once around the inner and the outer wire on the same side. Notice that we've got the wires just coming round, encircling that bead. So I'm just taking the two wires that are over on this side at the moment. And what we're doing is we're tying everything together. So let's just tighten that weave up one more time before we move forwards. Pinch your bead into position. And then we're going to wrap once around both the inner wire and the outer wire. Pull that nice and neat and tight underneath, enabling you to pull it nice and neat and tight underneath. It is simpler and easier on the fingers with your lighter, your 0.4 or 26 gauge, but you may prefer the slightly more industrial look with the heavier wire. So I'll show you them side by side later. So again, we're going to wrap three times around what is the lower or the inner of the two heavier gauges. So it's a case of just finding space to slot that wire down. One and two and three. You can see that we need to tighten those wires up. At this stage, you need to be very careful that you're not going to mark your bead. 
you might need just a little bit of help with the tip of your pliers to get that looking neat and tidy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to circle that inner wire around as if it's chasing the edge margin of our beautiful bead. And the top wire or the outer wire is going to chase around beside it. So I'm leaving a very tiny gap. You can see I just about get a fingernail between them. And that just means that it's easier for me to weave these two together. They don't need to be too tight together. We will be tying this up with some coils later to make it nice and safe. What you might find is that your woven shank twists in your hands. This will happen more with the heavier gauge wire. And all you need to do is gently coerce it to sit in a straight line so that it is more comfortable on the finger. So what we will do is continue all the way around the outside until we meet this section here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Circle once around the inner and the outer before drawing the wire up and then circling around the inner wire three times. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment when I've woven down to this point where we intersect the next section of the ring. So I've continued weaving in that same three and one pattern with the three wraps going around the inner wire and a single wrap going around both all the way until I've gotten to the bottom of the ring. So if you'd like to join me back at the board, I'll show you where we are now and how we're going to transfer onto the next section of weaving. As I've explained, I've woven all the way around until we've got to the very, very bottom. I've just flipped it upside down so I can show you where we need to go next. So I've wrapped three times around the inner and the outer wire has just got nothing going on for the time being. So what we're going to do is to now unspool some of the wire from our reel. Now this, as I said earlier, is the slightly heavier gauge wire. It is certainly firmer on the fingers. And I'm going to cut that to just around about 15 inches. Now that's probably a little bit generous, but just in case things go slightly awry, it always pays to have some extra. Now the reason I'm unspooling at this stage is because I want to tie one side of the weaving to the other side of the weaving. And we can't do that if we keep on the spool. So I'm going to take the very end of the wire and I'm going to pop the, the tail inside the section that rotates around the bead itself. So I'm going to just snake the end through the circle that we formed around the bead. And once I've pulled that through, I'll show you where that runs. So we're just undoing half of a weave from that last little section. I'm going to pull that underneath. So we've finished our three wraps around the inner wire and I've taken the wire down. The finer gauge wire has come down inside the circular frame on that bead. And I'm now going to just draw that up so that we can continue the same weave pattern. So we've now got a new inner and a new outer wire. What I think I will do is I'll pop a coil that I was going to add in later onto this inner wire so you can see slightly better what we're trying to achieve. Now you have an option, you can make a very, very tiny loop with this wire if you prefer. I actually like how the coil looks on the face of the bead, plus it stops the bead from rotating. So I'm going to be very, very cautious about how I put the end of my pliers against that bead. I'm going to create a small coil and then I'm going to flatten it down against the surface of the bead. So that's now nice and neat and tidy. The outer wire, I'm going to do the same thing with, but I'll do that a little bit later. What I've hopefully achieved is enabling us to see inside the design slightly better. So you can see we've got a new outer wire and a new inner wire. We're going to ignore that shorter wire for the time being. What we're going to do is just draw our tail. We've now cut, as I said, to about 15 inches. And we're going to wrap that three times around our new inner wire. So I'm going to give that one and two and three. That's really loose because I'm working with the heavier gauge wire. So I'm just going to use the curved side of my bent chain nose pliers to push that down into position as neat and as tidy as I can possibly get it inside the design. What I might do is just lift this old outer wire up out of the way so that you can see I've wrapped three times around the inner and I'm now going to continue the exact same pattern, wrapping once around both our new inner and new outer wires and then back to the existing pattern of three times around that inner wire. So there's those three wraps on the inner 
tighten up every time you complete three wraps and just start to bring that around so that it chases the edge of the bead. You can do that one wire at a time if you prefer. You might need to put just a bit more heat back into that and just start drawing that around, continuing that exact same weaving pattern. So around the inner and the outer once before returning to three wraps around that inner wire. Tighten those wraps up and continue until you repeat exactly as you did on the first half of my ring until we get down to the bottom and I'll meet you back there in just a second. So again, I've continued with my three and one weaving all the way down to the bottom of the ring. And I'm going to show you now a really cool little trick to hold everything together before we finalize the end of the ring design. So I've done a double wrap around the inner and the outer wire. But before I continue with my three to finish, what I'm going to do is a single wrap around that inner wire. Draw the wire around. We need to get that nice and tight. So I'm just going to use my pliers to push that into position. For the second wrap around my inner wire, I'm going to take the cut end and I'm going to post the end of that down inside the design between the woven section where we first started our weaving and the bead itself. Now it can be a little bit tight, but I'm just going to push that tail in and through. And you can see where that comes out. You might need to grip that with pliers. And we're going to get most of that tail of wire through before we support this section of wire that's looping. We don't want that to get creased. So we're just going to hold that with the non-dominant finger and pull that down into position. Whoops, wrong pliers. You might need to just help that last little bit pull that nice and tight through. Let's have a look at the underside of the ring and what we're going to do is bring the tail of the wire back through the design, looping once around this lovely smooth section. If you can't get onto this smooth section, just anywhere you can find a gap, and we're going to pop that wire back up and through like so, so that it comes up between the inner and the outer wire. Again, I'm just going to flip that over and show you how to support that wire as it comes through. So I'm using my finger as a stopper so that there's no crimping. I'm just going to keep that loop as open as possible, pulling that down all the way until you've got a very, very tiny but neat loop running around this section of wire that supports the bead. I'm going to flip the ring back onto its surface and do the third and final wrap around that inner wire. Now that looks complicated, but all we're doing is we're tying this side of the ring design to the main head of the ring. I'm then going to finish off with one wrap around both the inner and the outer. I'm just going to open this out slightly to make life easier. So one wrap around the inner and the outer, and then finish with three wraps as we would normally on that inner wire. So that's one, that's two and that's a third wrap to underneath. I'm going to get that nice and neat and tidy before trimming the wire away for the last time. We need to get inside the design. So you can either employ the wiggle technique to cut that wire. I actually much prefer to get in there with my flush cutters and make a definitive cut. So I'm just going to tidy that tail as neatly as possible inside the design make sure that I haven't disrupted that three in one weave and just tighten everything else up. Then I'm going to do exactly here what I did here, which is to turn a small loop over the face of that bead. So I'm trying to do this as easily for the camera to see as possible. Of course, it's completely backwards for how I would normally do it. So we're just going to turn a loop and then we're going to take that loop, flatten it down and push it over the surface of the bead, all without giving it a lovely smash, because that would be sad. So the bead is now encapsulated inside the ring design, and I'm going to try that for size. That fits beautifully. You can see, as I said earlier, that this design does tend to twist when you use the heavier weaving wire. So I'm just going to straighten that up and I'll probably pop it onto a ring mandrel in a minute to re-straighten it all together. Now your long tails of wire that you have, which were the outer frame tails, I quite like to have a second loop on them. However, there is something to be said for the symmetry 
of the ring in its design like so. So if you wish to, you can just truncate the wire and tuck the end underneath the loops, the coils that we've made. I like to have a second coil, but I'm just trying to give you options so that you can decide what suits yourself best. Now the tails that we had remaining for the coils on the inside were probably around about three quarters of an inch. So I want the second tail to be around an inch. It needs to be about 25% longer, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Oof. That was quite tough working with a harder wire today. So I'm going to add in a second coil now. Starting with my round nose pliers, just drawing that into a circular form. You can continue with your flat pliers or your bent chain nose pliers if you prefer. And you can just slide that underneath the first coil. I like how that looks. You might prefer a completely different adventure. It's entirely up to you. So again, on the second side, we're going to add in those round nose pliers. Whoops, they slipped off the end of the wire. Start rotating that around to get a round shape before switching to the flat pliers, making sure that the, the coil that you're creating is nice and flat. And I'm just going to slide that so that it sits just slightly underneath that first coil shape, tightening that up and making sure there's no sticky uppy bits. So again, you could just straighten up your ring shank and I'm just going to give that a quick round and eight. That's not a word, mind. So let's just pop that on. So that's slightly larger than I had anticipated. So you may need to size that down if that is your requirement. I love how these rings look. I first made this on TV back in 2015, and this is an adaptation for the YouTube channel here today. I hope that you like them as much as I do. And I will take a photograph of those side by side in a moment so you can see the difference in the finesse of the wire weaving. So there are our wire woven rings using 14 millimeter twist faceted round flat beads. That's something of a mouthful. I will pop a link into the bead blend that I used to grab these. It was Parisian blue, color trends by Jesse James. You can use whichever bead you want to. I've even got some flat lapis lazuli disc beads, which are really beautiful, but they have a much smaller drill hole. Yeah, I really like those. I hope you like them too. And I look forward to seeing you back here on the Gemhawks YouTube channel again very, very soon. Take care and bye for now.